Hey, hopping humans, what in the world is this? Are you replacing me? Oh man, this is a fine how do you do for 40 years of valuable and loyal service. <clears throat> The boss kit comes like most Fantasy Flight Games kits come for Star Wars Legion. There's the instructions, the kit, a base, and some game pieces. The model has the option of two different poses, and I decided to go with the one where he's holding a grenade in one hand and a gun in the other because the arms are opened up, and it'll be a lot easier to paint all of the details and still be able to glue the figure together. A test fitting of the parts shows that they fit perfectly. Just a little bit of glue will hold everything in place. And this is a magnificent sculpt. The newer Star Wars Legion figures are just amazing. The old ones were certainly good, but the more they do these, the better they look. It's just a beautiful, beautiful sculpt with loads of details to paint. They've really made these for painters to make it easy to get the shadows and highlights and other things like that. Great skin texture, just everything about it. As with any plastic kit, there are a few mold seam lines and I just use my hobby knife to just gently scrape those away and encourage them to be banished from the model. Once everything is assembled, I went ahead and glued him to the base so that it would make it easy to hold on to him uh, during the painting process. And with everything glued together and he's glued on the base, it's ready to get painted, but first I needed to prime it. I primed it in black and then did a white zenithal highlight. And the first color that I started painting was the straps in that white vest area. Now I used a light gray for this, and before I started painting I tried to decide would it be better to do the uniform first and then the straps or the other way around. Well I decided on the straps first and I'm not quite sure why I decided on that because when I later came back to paint the uniform I realized that I started getting paint all over the straps too. So once I did this I got to paint the uniform and then I began to go back and clean up the straps. Now the colors that I'm using for painting this are a recipe, I guess you'd say, that I saw Mark Sarastro use on his Trandoshan Warrior build that he did from uh, the Fantasy Flight Games uh, Star Wars Imperial Assault, I believe is what it's called. And I just wanted to follow his recipe because I thought the result looked really good. So I just went through and painted all of the, the uniform parts in and uh, that serve that that will serve as a basis for the yellow. Now you wouldn't be a mean space lizard without a really fancy red collar. In the movie, it wasn't quite this red, but I thought it would be kind of a nice uh, centerpiece feature point to draw attention to the model. So I went with a little brighter red for the skin. Again, using uh, Sarastro's recipe, I'm starting off with a green color, even though his skin has a little bit of a brownish tint. Um, that will come later. The green serves as a great base and then there's going to be of course highlights over that to uh, eventually shift it towards the more familiar green-brown look. There's lots and lots of detail on the skin so I'm really looking forward to getting further along in the process and highlighting that and really trying to bring out those scales. I had a lot of fun when I did the Fantasy Flight Games uh, do back with the stormtrooper riding on it, so this will be very similar in that regard. I realized after I'd painted those straps that I probably did the straps themselves a little too light, so I added a little bit of neutral gray to the original color I used and just went in and painted that in. It also allowed me to clean it up a little bit where I got any yellow over it. There's quite a few small details around the model that are a darker color. I didn't want to go pure black so I went with a German gray 
and this would allow me to not only add highlights later on but uh, have some places where I can build in some shadow. This process requires a lot of back and forth. I had all the colors on my palette so that if I made any mistakes I would clean them up right there and uh, make sure that I didn't forget about them later on. The next step I took was to add some shades to the model and this would just deepen the depths a little bit uh, provide some shadow and things like that and just help bring out the definition and the, the great sculpt that this model is and I mixed them mixed this with a little bit of Lamian medium just to thin it down so that I could build it up in layers and uh, kind of control the build up of it on his white jacket thing whatever that's called um, I used a Citadel contrast paint uh, apothecary white I didn't want these to be uh, the, the, the dark parts to be too sharp to be too dark so I used something that was much lighter in color just to kind of bring those out I also wanted to do some things to start brightening up the skin uh, a lot and I did this mostly on the upturned surfaces I didn't paint everything and I didn't try and get it down in all the recesses and uh, this was just to, to brighten up the, the areas of skin to give it a little tonal variety and uh, make it not appear so one note as, as it was with just that original base color. I continued this by detailing some of the scales adding in a lighter color and again this is just to add some tonal variety uh, I focused on the more upturned surfaces just to uh, suggest that that was getting more light on it. The process of highlights continued with the uniform and this is this is a little more difficult for me because trying to make distinctions between the shadows and the highlights and the midtones um, is just a skill that has to be developed and that's part of my reason for doing this is to develop these skills and so you see that that uh, I did the same thing on the white areas and I just keep working with lighter and lighter shades of the different colors to bring out the highlights it requires a lot more fine brush control a lot better understanding of thinning and how that's going to relate to it I did a little dry brushing on the gun just to uh, just to bring out those those details it looks I thought it looked fine just in the dark gray but I, I, I wanted some of the edges to stand out so a little bit of dry brushing very localized um, will just help that happen I may put a wash on it later I, I haven't decided yet now I wanted to make the skin really have some depth to it so I put some uh, some of the shade into it and I covered the whole the whole surface of the skin I didn't confine it to certain areas or just upturned surfaces I did this for everything it toned down those lighter colors that I put on there but it also brought out much more definition uh, from the sculpt that, that shows all of that I continued the highlights on the yellow uniform and this is just this is just a process of of painting on lighter colors and then seeing what you think of it and if you need to go in and add some shade add some shade back in uh, I only show a few seconds of this but uh, off camera when I was actually doing the work there was a lot of back and forth um, and just continuing to lighten that up and you see that that it just brings out more of those those highlights and just gives the the wrinkles in the uniform some life and uh, makes them look like uh, a, a real thing hopefully more highlights were added onto the the white vest and I was bringing them up to almost pure white uh, that's I, th I think I was I was uh, trying to be careful here to not make it look metallic I didn't want to get so many highlights that it started looking like non-metallic metal um, but it, it it definitely helps this area stand out and gives it more depth and and uh, just just makes it seem like more of a 3D thing. There's certainly um, it's certainly not flat, but 
by giving these highlights and these shadows and things, it just kind of fools the eye into thinking there's more there than there actually is. I also had to add some highlights to the straps. And for this, I did a little bit of edge highlighting, but I didn't do the traditional edge highlighting on both sides. I focused the edge highlighting on the upturned surface and then just kind of did some angle painting, I guess you would say, to, to provide some highlight where I thought the light might fall on these straps with the, the idea of giving them just a little bit of depth. Now on this back collar, I used uh, a lighter red to start picking out those individual little um, bumps. And the way I did this was I painted the, the red on it, holding the, the holder this way, and then I flipped it over and painted the lower part of them so that they were all fully painted and it was easier to get to that way. Then I went on to an even lighter shade of red and I just painted just the upper surfaces this time so that it would give it a little more reflectivity, a little more light, and uh, just make that curve come out just a little bit more. Now I had to paint the eyes and uh, this required uh, very careful uh, work and just putting on little dabs of paint at a time because it's real easy with something this small and with such a defined shape to go outside the lines. But once I had the initial color in there I went for a slightly brighter orange. I tried to confine this to the upper portion of the eye. I don't know that I did a real good job of that. Uh, but once I had that on there then I put in the black pupil and this this again this is why I, I like painting figures it forces me to learn brush control this was this was difficult I actually did this a couple of times uh, before I was happy with it and then I put in a shade to just kind of uh, cover up any uh, mistakes right around the edge of the eye but also just to give it a little depth um, and the illusion of maybe some some roundness to the eye next step I took was adding some highlights to the skin and I just began picking out individual scales. Uh, this was going to be uh, especially around the face where I wanted to just brighten it up a little bit, make it a little more of a focal point and, and just make that stand out a little more. But I did it all over the model, just painting little, little highlights here and there along the various scales uh, all over it so that it would just give it some more light, some more life, and some more, some more depth. I painted in his teeth with Screaming Skull. It's kind of a dingy white color. I figured the Bounty Hunters Guild didn't have a real good dental plan, so, so the, the Bounty Hunters teeth wouldn't look really good. As I began thinking about wrapping up the model, I went ahead and put some, uh, some texture paste onto the base, and this would just be to start uh, the process of getting the base done. I've still got plenty of steps to do on the model, but while everything else was drying I thought I would go ahead and add this to the model. I added a little bit of dry brushing with a, a color called Citadel Screaming Skull. It's just kind of a beige color. I wasn't really trying to suggest that the base is any particular planet. I was just going for something that would complement the rest of the colors well. I put a shade on that's uh, actually a combination of essentially brown and purple. Um, just doing some very basic color wheel theory, just looking across the color wheel from yellow and giving it kind of a purple look. Uh, the brown just desaturates it a bit. And then I needed to paint his toenails. Um, you don't often get to paint lizard toenails. So I looked at some photos and they just kind of looked a dingy kind of uh, kind of light tan kind of brownish look so I started off with uh, a lighter color and painted in his toenails and his fingernails and uh, just got those touched up a little bit uh, and then I went on and painted just kind of the ridged edges of them with a lighter color uh, Citadel's Ushab T-Bone uh, which is fun to say and uh, and just got those painted in a little bit there were also a few points on those, whatever those things are around his legs, that needed some touch-up. So I hit those with some Citadel Lead Belcher just to give them a little bit of shine 
and uh, make them look like the photos that I'd seen of Bosk. Well, I think I will call Bosk done. Uh, I'm pretty happy with the results. Not entirely happy. Um, I've still got, you know, if you watched my Gaunt's Ghosts, um, you, you know that uh, painting minis is something I want to get better at because of the skills it brings along. Um, and I found that, that painting on camera kind of forces you to do that. Um, and I, I feel like this is a better effort overall. Um, I still think that, that the, the blends, especially on the yellow part of the uniform between the highlights and the shadows is just, some of that is just not very, very good as, as much as I would like it to be. Um, some places it's just a, it's just it's just way too stark, uh, but that's that's why I'm doing this to work on it. Um, but uh, overall, I'm I'm happy with it. Uh, I think it it could certainly be better, um, but it it could certainly be worse. But uh, I did have fun. I, I, I learned. I had fun. Um, I've got a better appreciation for the character. So, uh, overall, I'm happy with it. Now, I did do a few things off camera, um, just finishing touches. I put some gloss in his eyes uh, just to give him a little bit of reflectivity. Just use some future for that. Just put a few drops of that in. Um, I, uh, I somehow missed, there's this hose on his back. And I got to the end, and I'm looking at it, and I'm getting ready to you know, say, okay, I'm finished with this. And I'm like... I completely forgot to paint that hose, so I painted it green and highlighted it. Um, just did everything the same that I did before. Um, I painted the rim of the base. I mixed some purple into a little bit of black. Um, it's really hard to see, but I think you know the the purple, the groundwork having a tint of purple, um, just kind of plays off that yellow, and I just think it's a nice a nice contrast to it. So. Well, thank you so much for watching this video. I've got the OB here joining the new boss. Got the old boss here uh, joining the new boss. And uh, I love these old Star Wars characters. Um, but thank you for, for joining me for this video. And especially if you're watching at this point, I'm always grateful uh, when people hang out to the, to the end. And... Uh, it, just to have a, a little bit of fun, why don't we uh, say if if uh, you'll drop a comment down down below that just says Leaping Lizards. <laughs> I'll know that you're here at the end and uh, everybody else who watches the first three minutes will go, what the heck is that about? Uh, so yeah, Leaping Lizards. <laughs> and and uh, I'd appreciate that. There's a subscribe link down over here. Uh, you know where it's at. And there's the bell icon. I hit those if you're not already subscribed, and so you'll know when I have new videos out. And I do appreciate it if you drop comments, not only on this video, but all of my videos. It just helps me grow the channel, and I would be most grateful for that. And give it a like also. And if you find this video helpful or enjoyable or whatever, um, please be sure and share it on social media. I would be most grateful for that also. There's links down below to social media, to my website, all of those things. You know about those. And, uh, of course, there's a link to Patreon. If you would like to support the work that I do in this channel, um, then I would be most grateful if you would click on that link and consider supporting me. And if you're already a Patreon supporter, thank you so much. It just means so much to me that um, you would support the work that I do. Uh, it supports me. It supports my family. Um, because I'm able to do things in a way that I wouldn't be able to do otherwise without uh, your support. And uh, so we are very grateful. It's a blessing to us, and we're thankful. And with all that being said, I'll leave you with one final thought, as I always like to do. In this hobby, if you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. Happy day to you, friends. Bye-bye.